This is not for mustaches, just like rabbit. We're going to turn this EP fiber into the most awesome sculpin ever. Yes, we're finally filming it. Fire fish food. So last fall at IFTD, Curtis here decided to force me into being in the iron fly competition. If you don't know what an iron fly is, it's uh, probably the most stressful thing that I've ever done in my life. Not really, it's stressful. But basically, they put you in a big line of tables, they give you advice, tools, and give everybody the same everything. I think there were like 27 people at this table and we had to all tie a fly. The flies go to judges, the judges look at it, and they choose the top five, I believe, and then there's a final round. Well, I got through to the final round, but in the final round, Chuck Forimsky said there was a secret material. And so he goes to a stage or something and pulls out the secret material. And it was a big old stuffed monkey, about the size of Brigham. So about 130 pounds, just unruly hair, just matted down, smelled terrible. Anyway, so we had to go harvest some hair off of this stuffed monkey and tie a fly out of that and use the same materials that we had for round one. So I cut off a bunch of this, this fur. It looked kind of like craft fur. I started tying and kind of freestyled a merkin with a flash tail. Merkin or tarpon toad or something like that. And then I got done, there were five minutes left, so I just started throwing stuff on this hook and tied something go, going over the top of this merkin. And it actually turned into a kind of a cool sculpin looking fly. And so the wheels started cranking. That fly ended up being the winning fly. So we have a, a nice, little trophy here in the shop but more importantly that got my creative juices flowing thinking that I could just tie a tarpon toad and put a rabbit strip over the top put some belly scratcher waiting in it and we have this guy this is a tan one this is a dark olive one and this is the brown olive one which I prefer but anyway kind of started messing with several versions of it and we, we did a swim test We'll, we'll show you the swim video footage as well in this video. And then uh, I actually had some in the shop when our good buddy Derek was in the shop. He was going on a guide trip. So he went and fished it and I, I get a, a message on Instagram from him and he's got this huge brown trout just holding it up like this. And uh, both he and uh, Ryan Dangerfield who was guiding him um, contacted me and they said, okay, what is this fly? But talking to Derek later, he said that the fish would move further to eat this fly because it swam so, so naturally and it looked so realistic. Um, and that almost every fish that followed it ate it. And so it's, it's, you know, a fish catcher, even though I haven't even fished it yet. But that's why you have buddies who fish. So I, I kind of started tweaking the fly. It's got a tapered uh, rabbit tail. It's got belly scratcher weighting on the front of it. And the way that it's weighted makes it so that this fly doesn't dive down. It actually glides horizontally in the water, as you'll see in the swim footage. But anyway, it's a fun tie. It takes a while, so bear with us. There's a lot of prep work to get this right. And uh, this is one of those flies that, that's an investment. So if you tie up some of these flies, protect them buy a hook hone, sharpen your hooks, and use thick tippet. First things first on this sculpin, we need to prep quite a bit. This is a chunk of olive. This is brown, this is black, just regular EP fibers. And I want those, when they're blended, when they're mixed together, to look like this. So as you can see, this is a nice camouflage olive-ish color that's a mix of all these. I went through quite a few of these when I was messing around with it and I kind of came up with a method that that works pretty well okay so I've got equal pieces of each of the colors if anything go a little heavy on the olive and what I'm gonna do is just kind of take out 
sections of each color and I want to make sure they stay nice and lined up and you'll have some stragglers but I'm going to alternate colors and this just kind of speeds up the blending process so just like that okay so we have it all lined up pretty well for the most part and from here I'm going to take this loon comb this is actually a super useful tool for this what I'm going to show you also if you fish saltwater flies or bigger flies with like EP fibers or SF fibers when you catch a fish it mangles your fly you can brush it out it's a very useful tool all right so I'm going to grab these clumps and then we're going to move down to my knee okay so now I'm just going to lay this over my knee and from here I'm going to grab grab it very very firmly and I'm going to start just kind of brushing this out with this comb and it's going to want to flatten out on my knee like this and that's what I want it to do so as soon as it's flat on one side I'm going to turn it over and just press it down with my hand and make sure that it's nice and flat on the other side and it takes a while for it to to start to blend but from here I'm going to take these fibers and I'm going to roll them all together all right so I've rolled those all up and now you can see it's starting to blend a little bit more and then I'm just going to repeat that process several different times and so as you can see I have a big clump of black here I'm going to kind of grab the comb and pick that black and move it over to other spots in the, the clump to blend that into up to the other colors all right so once I have that again I'm going to place my hand flat on it and brush that side flat now I'm just going to keep repeating that process roll it up and then brush some more so this is for an olive sculpin if you want a tan one I do the same colors I just uh, take the olive out and add beige EP fibers this is usually where Curtis inserts reggae music when I say reggae it's usually clown music because it takes forever so as you can see we're getting a really nice blend and we're going to just continue to do that until you can almost not even see a difference between the three colors Okay, so we're getting really close with this. This is this is going to be a nice mottled color. And at that point I can just grab it with my hand back here. I don't have to worry about making it so flat. All right. So that's that's the color that I'm looking for for this sculpin. All right. So once I have my fibers all brushed out, I'm going to take a fairly healthy clump of them out, just about like this. That might be too much. Let me separate that out. If you get too much, just take the other part and put it right back in there. All right, so once I find a good amount that I want to work with, I'll show you how to get this prepped so that you can get ready to tie. This is a really super cool tool from, from Hairline to help stage materials. And as you can see, 
I already have some of the materials staged to get ready to tie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hank of material that I got and double it over so that it's roughly you know the same length on each side. And I'm going to take a long bladed scissor. I like this Fisker's scissor quite a bit because it's it's really good for synthetics and I'm just going to cut it right in the middle. Now I'll use this tan sculpin as an example but as you can see the very front of the fly has shorter fibers than the, the back and because of that I'm going to you know reduce my waste of these EP fibers because they're a pain to mix. I'm going to cut two different lengths of, of the fibers and, and put these in the in the staging tool so that I can uh, reduce my waste on this. Anyway I have big fat fingers so I'm just going to do like a barber and I'm going to do about a finger width and a half just a little bit more than a finger width and that's going to be one of my short sections for the front of the fly and I'm just going to stick that in this staging tool kind of at an angle because it doesn't go all the way through. I'll just let that sit right there and then the next one that I'm going to do out of this hank is going to be a little bit longer about like that. So I'm going to put that one back here. That's a long one versus the short one. Now I'm going to do one more longer section and then I'm going to, I have kind of some leftover fluff where it's kind of all tapered out and I'll show you how to use that. So this is the other half of it. Again I'll do one short section. I'll put it in my tool. And now I'll, I'll cut a longer section. And another longer section. So with these two kind of tag ends, if you take these and flip them around and kind of put them together and pull out the longer fibers. It usually leaves you with enough of those to, to do one more section. And I'll throw that in right there. So we have one, two, three, four, five long sections and we have two shorter sections. And that's what we're going to use to tie our tarpon toad style body. So this is going to be a little bit longer tie. So bear with me. So as you saw, we, we, get, we got everything prepped. I'm going to just tie this on a size 1 fulling mill streamer stripper hook. And just with 140 denier thread. You don't need like GSP or anything like that. Because we're, we're really not putting a ton of force down here. First thing what we're going to do is we're going to build up kind of a, a flash undertail out of some polar flash. A couple reasons why I do that. Number one is because I want a little bit of flash to the fly and sculpins have a, a lighter colored belly. And also I'll show you how, how I do it but I'm going to build in kind of a foul guard so that the rabbit doesn't foul quite as much. So I'll take the, the polar flash and just tie that in here at the back of the fly and then I'll trim it about that long. Nothing scientific here. And then take your, your favorite thin UV resin and we're going to kind of fan the tail out into a triangular shape just like that. And I'm going to soak some resin into that and onto my thread just a little bit just so that it's a little bit rigid. So it's only about a third of the way up this flash and I'm going to hold it in a triangular shape with my thumb and forefinger and then I'll just come in here and zap it. And it will sit nice and triangular like. 
Okay, so once we're here, we need to already start thinking about how the fly is going to be weighted. So I'm going to take some articulation wire or, you know, beadlon or whatever kind of wire you want to use. I also use Power Pro on this, so some braided line. But I'm just going to tie it in right here so that it's going out the back of the fly. And I'm going to definitely fold that over. Okay, so once I have that tied in, I'm going to super glue this so that it won't uh, break, makes it a little bit more durable. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up a ramp of thread up to where I tied in this wire just because I'm going to slide around these sections of EP fibers a little bit. And it makes it easier if there's not a big bump there. I might run into a spot where I need to slide it over that bump. Okay, so now the fun begins. I'm going to start not all the way at the back. My thread's about right in the middle of where I tied that wire in. And I'm going to take these uh, sections of EP fiber that I already have lined out, and I'm going to take one of the larger clumps and I'm going to hold this on the far side of the hook so that I can just put two or three fairly loose wraps on this. And if I keep hold of this, I can grab the other section and pull it toward me and now do a few more kind of looser wraps here. Now if I do that, you can see that one section is longer than the other. I should be able to grab the sections and wiggle them back and forth until I can position those how I want. And now the thread wraps are a little bit loose, so if I grab all those fibers and pull them back and wrap thread back over my crisscross wraps, they'll be nice and tight. And I don't need that to hold super super tight because we're going to come back and hit it with super glue and this wire is going to be going over it so anyway what I'm going to shoot for now is I'm going to put three of those larger clumps on and then we'll worry about the beads for the belly scratcher weighting system now this is the part of the fly where it, it becomes critical to to hold the EP fibers the right way and I'm even going to move my thread forward further than I really want to put this clump and I'll show you why. So if I, if I come in here and I kind of hold the, the other fibers out of the way with my other hand and I come in here and do a few loose wraps and without letting go pull that aside and now I can grab all the fibers and put two more loose wraps. Now you can see how far away those, those clumps are that's a little bit too far so what I can do is I can grab the fibers and wiggle those back and forth and kind of walk those back toward the the previous clump all right so once I have it pulled back again I put down the locking wraps in front of it and it sits down nice. So we'll do that one more time before we do our beads. All right, so as you can see, I've got three clumps tied in, and now is when I'm going to put my beads in. On this size one fly, I use two 4.6 millimeter beads. Uh, and you might find that you like to use three, you might find that you, you like to use two 4.6s and a smaller bead in the front. But if you do three beads, I would recommend that you put uh, one more clump of EP fibers and the reason for that is if you 
do one more clump than you have beads. So I have three clumps but two beads. When I pull those over, the beads kind of rest in those little indentations of the, the fiber. So it kind of gives it a spot to rest. I'm using some slotted beads on this. It doesn't matter what kind of beads you have. These, I, I had a whole bunch of these beads. So in the recipe link, I put a link where you can buy 100 packs of beads. It saves you a little bit of money. But there's no rhyme or reason for the beads here as far as slotted or color or anything. I do kind of like a gold on the olive. Anyway, I'm using slotted here. Use whatever you've got. So I'm going to pinch this wire down and give it a few wraps and now I can pull it fairly tight and then I'll tie that down and I'll take the wire and pull it back over the top of itself if I can do it and really wrap that down tight and come in here with a little flush cutter. We even have the kind that hold the wire for you so it doesn't fly across the room. All right, so once we're to this point, again, since we put the wire in, we're going to tag it with a little bit of super glue. Just like that. And now we're going to do another one of those ramps of thread up to the bump so I can wiggle my EP fibers back and forth if I need to. And then depending on the hook you're using, we're going to put two to three more clumps of EP fibers in this. All right, the next one's going to go right about here. Same pinch technique. And now I'm going to move to the smaller clumps that I cut off because I'm, I'm at the, the head of the fly. And these can be a little bit trickier to tie in. Maybe for your first few, just use all the same length of fibers. But it will save you on the EP if you use a smaller length of clump on these front two. So as you can see, the body's looking nice and flat. And this will be the final clump. OK, so we've got those all tied in. And as you can see, my beads sit really far back on the fly, and that's critical because it will allow the fly to glide horizontally and not nosedive. Like in the swim footage, you'll see that the fly just kind of kind of glides along. All right, so now once all the EP fibers are, are tied in, I'm just going to brush some super glue on all those tie downs. And we'll do it on both sides. You see that's kind of a cool shot there. All right, so we're fully tied in. We're ready for some rabbit now. Okay, so I'm using Magnum Zonker strips. So as you can see, that's a pretty thick leather strip. And I like to taper down the back half of it. So we have just, just a a square end and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll try to show this to you but I'm, I'm basically going to hold the the rabbit stick my scissors just barely on the leather and cut it at an angle and it's easiest if you kind of grab it with your thumb at the end of the rabbit and try to stretch it out it's easier said than done Okay, so at the end of the day, here we have the thick piece and it's tapered down 
to a thin piece, but I didn't cut off any of the, the fibers. So that tail now is going to kick side to side when I strip it. So I want the I want the zonker strip to be, I don't know, the, the tail is going to be roughly the same length of the eye all the way back to the where the flash ends. So I'm going to kind of measure that out and take the rabbit strip now and poke it with the hook. So I've got that punctured and now I'm going to take it out of the vise so I can move it down past the barb and I will debarb this before I fish it. From here I'm going to seat this rabbit and it, sometimes it's easiest to to take a little bodkin and lay that down on top of the the body. So for this part I'm just going to tie off that sculpin strip now or that that rabbit strip but it can be easier said than done because we have a whole bunch of fibers that want to get in the way of our tie down. So I'm going to moisten my fingers and pull all those EP fibers back and pull this with my left hand and just kind of come in here and make a part so that when I wrap my thread over it, it's just catching leather and not not hair. Alright, so once we're here, try to catch the leather without catching too many EP fibers. See that's a little tiny tie down point. I'm just going to give it a few turns and there we have it. All right, so I'm going to use some finer tip scissors like these Loon micro tips. And you will cut your thread off a few times when you do that. So get ready for that. You will swear and wake up everybody in the house if it's at night. All right, so there's a pretty good tie down. And we're just going to whip finish this guy now. All right, so now we're looking mighty sculpiny here. So I'm going to do one last check, make sure that my fibers are all sitting nice and flat. And see how this rabbit is kind of going over the, the EP fibers. I don't really want that quite yet, so I'm just going to moisten my fingers and preen the rabbit back. And then I can take the EP fibers and pull them back out. The reason I'm going to do that is because um, we'll put eyes on this guy. So that does look maybe a little too slim, but when it's in the water, it, it puffs back out. All right, so we're ready to trim this. So um, I kind of use the hook eye as, as a guide, and I'm going to just kind of put my, my scissors against that hook eye and just make a cut and round off the head and I'll just turn it upside down to do the other one so I don't have to get on the other side of the vise. A rotary vise really makes that easy. So from here I'm just going to finish rounding off the body. And you can sit and trim this all day, but that's that's looking pretty decent. So also, you'll see that this body is really full. It's really flat on the sides. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to. You can see how I'm resting my hand on my vise, and then I'm resting the scissors on my hand to to get stability. And I'm going to round off those hard edges and it thins out the fly, removes a little bit of the fiber. And I'll do it on the top as well. 
think for my second career, I'm going to be a barber. Like, do the tight fades and stuff. I could totally do it. Straight razors freak me out, though. Okay, so you can see we're nice and rounded out. Fly's looking good. Get some of those little stragglers out of the way. Now we're looking mighty sculpiny. All right, so a couple little added sections of flare that we're going to put on here is we're going to make the belly kind of glow with this UV finish from from Loon and what I'm going to do is I just take this stuff and I just coat it all over the beads and let it seep in and that kind of creates a a solid casing around that Just like that, just a, a big water resin here, and then I'll just hit that with the light. It's gonna add durability and also a little bit of flash to the bottom of the fly, in case current flips it up on its side. Now for the eyes. The eyes are the part that I get asked about the most, and for for the olive sculpin, I use black, the, the Loon black, and for the tan sculpin, as you can see, I use the brown resin. They're super, super dark eyes. And actually, the black stuff is, is not a solid black, which is a good thing because some of the solid black resins, if you put it on a fly, it's only going to cure the outside of this. With this resin, it's going to cure the whole eye. And basically, I'll try to explain this because it's going to happen kind of fast. So I'm going to take my light and I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to put it on the table. And then I'm going to take this resin and sometimes as you squeeze it out there can be little bubbles that form. You don't want that. So if you have bubbles that start to form on the end of your, your needle for your resin, you want to just kind of rub those off on a piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start squeezing out resin until it balls up enough to fall on the fly and once I get it to where I want it I will zap it so as you can see there's one little beady eye and I'm going to do another one right on the other side of the zonker strip so without having to click the light I just lift up the light and it's already turned on and it zaps those eyes in place and that's a super super durable eye um, because it's basically building itself into that resin or into the, the EP fibers. From here I'll just finish off the fly with a little bit of super glue as head cement and keep in mind that this this head is still a little moist so I'll pick it out just to kind of show you what the overall fly will, will look like, just like that. So anyway, there it is, the Sculpin Toad. Now you know how to tie it. Tie it in all sizes from about size 4 up to one knot. Happy tying, and don't catch too many fish on this. It would be irresponsible.